Hello and welcome to the power shed. Uh, I saw this uh, guy complaining about this power supply on uh, a message board and you know he was disappointed he couldn't get a couple millivolt resolution on it to uh, charge his batteries and I thought well geez he paid 55 bucks and uh, that's pretty cheap. I thought I'd look it up and I was looking through power supplies. Uh, one of the things I noticed and I didn't like right away was see these two capacitors these are part of a voltage doubler and voltage doublers always have uh, a little switch here for 110 220 and uh, that means that the inverter power supply is going to take a lot of voltage they do that to uh, you know make the small the smallest uh, transformer possible you know using a known voltage that you're going to be operating from. Many switching supplies, like I have one over here that's 110 to 220, and it'll operate down to 60 volts, and I can get 80, 85 percent power output with it. So, anyways, I was hoping to run this off 60 volts because I have that little power strip there. I don't have an inverter running all the time, and when I do need an inverter, I use this one. It's a little 400 watt and uh it doesn't produce ac it produces dc so i have 150 volts dc that came out of this it's enough to power the scope uh you know another one of my uh recent purchases and i would have liked that it would be battery operated but uh i don't know i went through something cheap because my regular usb scope won't work on uh, my laptop since uh, it died and I got a Windows 10 S and they're horrible so anyway I got this one interesting thing is the uh, USB port on the front uh, that's a totally separate power supply and that will actually operate on 60 volts just fine and uh, this one could probably operate on 60 volts uh, this little capacitor here uh, there's a high meg value resistor that charges up that capacitor and that bumps the uh, regulator to starting and then once the regulator starts switching it takes a little tap off the transformer and powers itself now I've done this with many uh, different switchers operating them at low voltage I just change that resistor but you know then I'd only be able to get about maybe 15 volts and uh, Chances are, if I'm using the scope, I'll be using this power supply. So, I'm not going to modify this thing, really. But, let me show you how these supplies work. Uh, you have the normal full-wave bridge that uh, comes in from the AC. And, that switch only has two wires to it. And, uh, when you flip that... It turns into two half-wave rectifiers and uh, the top diode rectifies the positive the bottom diode rectifies the negative and those two add together so you go from 169 volts peak to uh, 340 volts about and so when I'm operating this uh, on DC I'm going to want to uh, have the switch open because if I don't, uh, current will be coming past, returning through this diode, and I'll have three quarters of a volt across this capacitor in the wrong polarity. Uh, that will affect the forming. It doesn't really damage the, tr the uh, capacitor, but it's not good for a long term. And uh, the capacitor does have to reform again once you apply the right voltage to it. <coughs> so. It's best if you're going to operate these things on DC that uh, you put it in the higher voltage mode. So I could only get about 23 volts out of this thing uh, when I used this uh, inverter. And that inverter put out like 150 volts DC. And when you uh, are operating an inverter, a long time, also you have this little... You can create a little voltage doubler 
So if I have normally like 14 volts coming into this thing, I can double that to 28. So 28 plus 150, you know, I get about 178 volts. And uh, this thing gets like 179 volts with uh, no load on it. And operating the scope and this power supply, I get uh, about 175. So that's a quick little uh, modification that allows me to use this. And that gets me up at 100. I did it first with uh, just adding the 12 volts coming in. And that got me up to like uh, 126 volts. I mean, uh, uh, 26 volts on the output. And uh, going with 20, adding another t the 28 to it, uh, that got me up to, you know, 28 Volts here, got 2878. So that works out okay. So, anyways, uh, you know, I got uh, this signal right here. I have that attached to the test leads. And any switching supply makes a lot of noise. So, if you run this probe around over here, around where the transformers are, you'll get all this pickup. And, you know, this is just. A shorter clip lead you have to be really careful when you're making noise measurements because you don't know if you're picking up from this device or just stuff out of the air so watch this we're going to turn the power off oh noise went away whoa noise is back there so just these leads sitting out here we're picking up all this noise uh, these switching power supplies are a little noisy, and you'll get about 100 millivolts maybe of noise on them. Uh, they have a couple, you know, ferrite donuts there. And you can see on this, uh, the capacitor board at the terminals, <clears throat> they have an electrolytic, and they have spots for a couple extra capacitors, which they didn't put in. Uh, it would be good to add those. You know, if you got an extra ferrite core, put it around the leads. But, you know, 55 bucks, it's not, it's not bad. It, you know, if you want really low noise, go with an analog supply. So, uh, that's it.